So it's important that we limit the amount of leaf tissue on the cutting to avoid excessive moisture loss through the leaves. These are six of the most common reasons why houseplant propagations fail and perhaps why you are struggling to propagate your plants successfully. I've got a bonus tip on why you may be propagating successfully without knowing, so stay tuned until the end. The number one reason why propagations fail is due to rotting on the stem. Once the stem of the cutting you've taken begins to rot, there is no turning back and you might as well throw that cutting in the bin. You can tell when a stem starts to rot when it starts to go black. Unfortunately, this will only spread until the whole stem is affected and dies. But why the cuttings rot, I hear you cry? Well, this would be down to too much moisture or poor cutting technique. If you propagate your cuttings in something like soil or sphagnum moss, then it's important to keep the moisture level right for your cuttings. Too little water in your cutting will shrivel up and die and too much water in your cutting will just rot. Obviously cuttings aren't plants yet so they don't have roots to be able to take up moisture. Instead the stem just sits in wet soil and over time it develops rot. The medium you are using to propagate should be damp and not wet. Poor cutting technique relates to how we take the cutting and plant up into our rooting medium. We need to make sure we remove all lower leaves of a stem cutting to prevent leaf tissue getting in wet soil or water which will then turn to rot which then degrades the stem. The only part of the cutting that should be in the rooting medium is the stem. There shouldn't be any leaf tissue. Lighting has a massive impact on the success or not of your cuttings. It can be really frustrating to take cuttings from our beloved plants only to find that they have either shriveled up and died or nothing has happened for months. Both of these things are normally down to too much or too little natural light. Cuttings need as much indirect sunlight as possible to encourage the stems to develop roots. Without enough light, the cutting will likely just sit there for months not developing roots. This can be enormously frustrating if you don't know why this is happening. Probably the best light source for cuttings is grow lights. This allows you to control exactly how much light your cuttings get each day and for how long. You can set the distance of the light to the cuttings and set how long the lamp is on for. I have found that my cuttings root super quick when I place them under a grow light. In fact, I have these Ficus Elastica Tineki cuttings that I was trying to root near my east facing window for weeks and I saw no sign of any roots. Last week, I put them under my grow lights and I'm now seeing roots. I do have an Amazon link to the grow lights I use in the description of this video if you're interested. Keep your cuttings out of direct sunlight, especially if you set up a propagation box, otherwise your cuttings will just cook inside. Cuttings are not yet plants with roots, so they can't effectively use sunlight for photosynthesis to store energy, so giving them too much direct light will lead to failure. Another common mistake that beginners tend to make with their cuttings is leaving too much leaf tissue on the cutting. Cuttings don't yet have the capacity to store much moisture because they're not established plants yet, so it's important that we limit the amount of leaf tissue on the cutting to avoid excessive moisture loss through the leaves. Plants evaporate moisture through their leaves and draw moisture up through their roots from the moist soil. Cuttings don't yet have roots to draw up moisture, so if they evaporate too much through their leaves, then they dry out and die. It's generally a good idea to remove all but two or three leaves on the stem of the plant, depending on what cutting you have taken. On a Tridescantia, for example, I would probably keep two leaves on the stem to allow it to photosynthesize and not lose too much moisture. For vining type plants, I would take a cutting at each leaf node so the cutting only has one leaf. If you do have problems with your cuttings of vining plants because they're drying out quickly, then try cutting the leaf in half especially if you live in a hot climate. If you are trying to propagate succulents and you are finding that the stem or leaf always rots after a few days or weeks, then try letting the cutting callus over before adding to your rooting medium. When we make a cutting of a plant, we expose the tissue of the plant to the elements. And when we plant this up too soon into some soil, 
there is a risk of rot developing on the stem due to too much moisture entering the cutting. If you allow the cutting to callus over for a few hours, this means the exposed flesh of the cutting has a chance to dry over a little and form a sort of scab. This then prevents excessive moisture from entering into the cutting and rotting the stem. You can even let the cutting sit overnight to be sure. Often your cuttings will fail because you are not using an inert potting medium when planting your cuttings to root. An inert potting medium is just a medium that is chemically inactive. It doesn't have any nutrients. If you plant your cuttings up into nutrient rich compost, then chances are your cuttings are failing due to bacteria entering the stem of the cutting and rotting the stem. This is because the cutting does not yet have roots to draw up the nutrients from the soil. This is why adding fertilizer to the water of your cuttings will not increase the success rate or speed of getting roots. You're best off just using plain old water. I only propagate in two mediums, water or perlite. Perlite is fantastic for rooting cuttings because it is inert, just like water, but it also has substance, which makes it much easier to transplant the cuttings to soil than water when they have developed roots. All I do is fill a plastic tote box with perlite, water it lightly, plant the cuttings and place the lid on. I find this method develops roots the quickest due to the high humidity you create in the tote box with the lid on. Sometimes cuttings fail just because we have chosen a difficult plant to try and propagate. Some plants are much quicker to develop roots than others and when we don't get results within a few weeks we tend to think the cutting has failed. My advice here is that as long as your cutting is not rotting or is not dried up then leave it alone. Eventually, it should develop some roots. This is because plants have a surprising will to survive and will find a way. It just might take longer than we want. Tradescantias are without doubt the quickest and easiest plant to propagate. You can put this plant in literally anything and it will develop roots within days. This plant grows like a weed and is considered invasive in lots of countries, so generally will find roots very easily. Ficus plants, on the other hand, tend to be a little slower to develop roots. As I mentioned earlier, it's taken a long time for my ficus teneki cuttings to take root. So be patient and don't be deterred if you don't see results as quick as you want. When you propagate plants in perlite, sphagnum moss or soil, you'll no doubt be checking the cuttings regularly to see if they're developing roots by pulling them out of the medium. This is something I'm always doing with my perlite cuttings to check how they are getting on. But the problem I found was that I was pulling out the cuttings and not seeing any roots. Often the reason for this was because I was not being careful when taking the cuttings out and accidentally breaking the roots in the process, leaving them in the perlite box. Developing roots are super delicate and are easily broken off when handled by an ape like me. Sometimes it's best to just leave the cuttings alone undisturbed to grow roots until they are more robust for us to pot up into soil. Now that you know how to propagate plants and succulents, you now need to know the 10 secrets to having happy succulents in your home. So make sure you click on the link here and I'll see you there.